So, okay, it says uh, heat engine is found to have an efficiency of, okay, let me just write down the efficiency formula. This is kind of general way efficiency of an engine is defined in our context. Uh, in the broader context, it's what you want divided by what you need to put in. What you want with the heat engine is the work done. What you need to put in is the heat transfer at the high end. So that's the efficiency formula. So let's just go through that. That's the efficiency. If it does this much work, then I can do uh, moving, swapping this around. Work divided by efficiency will give me that. So 240 divided by 0 0.14. So heat absorbed should be 17.14 joule. And uh, heat discharged will be that minus the work done. So 15.14. Is it up? Oh, wait, did I miss something? Oh, 240, sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Q6-3 uh, is the next one. So let me just think it's this one. Let me just double check to make sure I'm on the right one. Okay. It is found that an uh, engine discharges 140 joule while absorbing 175 joule. So the efficient, so the amount of work done is 35 joule. So the efficiency is 35 divided by 175. Uh, so 20% or 0 0.2. Uh, in, I don't see percent sign. How much work was done? Oh, yeah. So you would answer B first and then A. Um, and then question 6-4. Just double check. Uh, refrigerator has a coefficient of performance. Oh yeah, so this is where you have to know the so the so coefficient of performance is a kind of efficiency. So you still go by what you want divided by what you have to put in. With the refrigerator, what you want is the heat removed from the low temperature reservoir. So that's QL, and what you have to put in is the mechanical work you have to provide, usually the form of electricity. So I can imagine a 100% mechanical refrigerator where compressor is done by, but sorry, I, that's more like steampunk scenario. Let <laughs> me not get distracted. Okay, so that's the coefficient of performance. Uh, if it requires that much work per cycle, then how much heat per cycle does it remove from the cold reservoir? Uh, it's probably worth a write, for me to write this down. Um, QH minus QL is W. Just helps me do a mental calculation. So um, oh, for that, I think I can just do it from here. So uh, QL, so moving W over to the other side, so the work to 10 times the coefficient of performance will give you the amount of heat removed, 441. And that plus that should give you the heat expelled into the, um, in, into the high temperature reservoir. So that's 6-4. Next one is six dash six. Let me just make sure I'm on the right one. So this I must have done it. It's in one of the other videos. Um, heat pump has a coefficient of performance of two. Okay, so uh, so this was the heat coefficient of performance for refrigerator. Coefficient of performance for heat pump is different because what you want is different. With a heat pump, you don't want to. You don't care about the heat that you remove from the cold outside. You care about the heat that you put into the warmer inside. And what you pay is still the same. You have to do mechanical work to make the heat flow in that unnatural direction. So if it requires that much work, then yeah, moving this over times the coefficient of performance, uh, 250 times two, I knew that, I could have done that in my head. 500 joule is the amount of heat you put into the room, the warmer inside, and um, that minus the work done will give you the heat that's been uh, transferred from outside. That's how a heat, heat pump has a bigger, like this, you know, in terms of the efficiency, that would be 200% efficient. And uh, that's realistic because heat pump, a uh, good chunk of the heat that it uses, it doesn't come from, it doesn't create it, it transfers it, it pumps it. Okay, 6-7, that's one of the questions, yeah. Heat pump uh, puts in 50 joule of heat into the hot reservoir per cycle, whose coefficient of performance is that. So I'm looking for work. So I gotta swap these two. So uh, QH uh, 50 divided by 4.6 will give you the amount of work you have to do. Uh, I don't think I can round it to 11. That should be 10.9. Uh, 
uh, what is the amount of heat taken in from the cold reservoir per cycle? So that minus that is 39.1, I think. <laughs> if I get it wrong, I'll just use a calculator or go slower. Uh, 6-8, yeah, that's one of the questions. Performing 120 joule of work, engine discharges that much heat. Okay, we are back to heat engine. Um, so that's the uh, heat transfer at the low temperature end. So the this QH is the sum of these two, so 175 joule. So for efficiency, I do 120 joule work, divided by 175, uh, 68.0.686, 0.686 um, as a fraction. That's probably unreasonably efficient. Um, but moving on, we don't have a lot of time. Um, 6-9, yeah, that's one of the questions I haven't done. A Carnot heat engine operates between reservoirs that... Oh, so there is a... Yeah. So, so far the formulas that we've been working with were for um, just the general heat engine. Uh, that's why I didn't have to look for Carnot engine. Uh, there's a formula that's uh, derived, presented in the textbook uh, that's only for Carnot engine. Heat efficient... Uh, the Efficiency of Carnot heat engine, uh, reversible Carnot heat engine, is given, uh, you can derive this in terms of not these energy quantities, but in terms of temperature quantities. It's uh, TH minus the cold temperature reservoir divided by temperature, hot temperature reservoir. It's, uh, uh, so, so once they give you these operating temperatures, then you can calculate the efficiency. Let's do that. The difference is 286 divided by 586. So, um, so that's the efficiency of this Carnot heat engine. I just stored it into memory. It's saying it absorbs this much. Uh, so that's QH. So it's a working, looking for work. Uh, so I gotta move this over. So efficiency times QH. So that. Oh, 100. I know how to do that in my head. Uh, 48.8 joule. Um, yeah, so, um, so by telling you to car probably should have said the reversible Carnot heat engine, but that's fine. Uh, unless the question says it's irreversible, you should assume it's reversible anyway. All right. So we have, I'm just looking at this list here, we have questions 9 and these 4. Maybe I can do it. Um, we are going to go a little over time, but I think it's worth just doing it so that they don't remain on my list as something I have to keep doing. Uh, yeah, so let's do it. I think I can do it. Uh, Carnot engine divide... Um, so by the way, um, when the question gives you temperatures in degrees C, convert it to... Um, uh, convert it to um, Kelvin. Because uh, all these formulas, this formula, it only works for Kelvin uh, scale, absolute scale. The Celsius, Fahrenheit, neither of them are sufficient. So TC there, that is uh, 218 Kelvin. Um, and T hot there is 473 Kelvin. It's probably okay, rounded up 0.15. Um, so with that, uh, if a device operates, yeah, heat engine, what is its efficiency? Um, so the difference, <laughs> uh, actually, difference I can, could have just done with that number. Just taking this difference is easier. Divide by 473. Um, so that should be the efficiency. Let me just double check. 0 0.539. Um, and uh, as a heat pump, um, I guess you could do things. Uh, there, If you notice one thing, it's kind of super nice. You can kind of see here with the engine and pump that these two are reciprocal of each other. So the same thing's gonna hold for Carnot heat pump. So I already have that. So I just take the reciprocal that will give me the coefficient of performance of a heat pump. If it's a refrigerator, I need more work, but it's at a heat pump. So I can do this, take this, one divided by that. And that will give me the coefficient of performance of the Carnot heat pump. Um, so, which of the statements below most correctly distinguish between a heat engine and a heat pump? Um, 
these are nonsense, uh, hidden zone operates more efficiently with a large temperature difference. Uh, yeah, that's actually true. Uh, you can kind of figure that from, you know, the smaller the efficiency, the higher the coefficient of performance and vice versa. And this is kind of that description. Large temperature difference does mean a more efficient heat engine. And I think the rest are wrong. Independent of temp, no, they are dependent on temperature differences. More efficient, yeah. So uh, actually, this is why uh, in really colder climate, heat pump is not as good. But in California, uh, where you know it's not that cold, heat pumps are actually great. Uh, except in Bay Area, you don't often need any kind of heating device. <laughs> but, uh, if you live in slightly colder area, part of Bay Area, heat pumps can be uh, really energy saving. Uh, you know, let me do it. Uh, I think I can do it. Um, so it'll take maybe another five minutes. So um, we do have to go back to the um, description of entropy change for reversible processes. It's given by amount of heat transfer at the temperature where this occurs. So this uh, expression is good when your temperature is constant. And I'm hoping the our questions will be for that. So this is how much heat they give you the temperature, probably constant. So the entropy change should be um, the amount of heat transfer, 140 divided by, oops, 140 divided by the temperature, 240. And uh, you can check the unit to make sure the unit makes sense or removed. So that's going to be decreasing the entropy. So minus 0 0.583.